The rivalry with Michigan is the lifeblood of Ohio State football. To take the pulse of that series, we present a roundtable discussion from 11 Warriors. This is Ramsey Nasrallah, purveyor, one of the purveyors of the 11 Warriors. Great defender of the, uh, of the website from all powers, big and small. I didn't know where you are going there. Great <laughs> defender. All right. I'll take it. That's about it. That's, a, that's pretty that's, much you in a nutshell. That's my epitaph. Twitter maven. Twitter maven. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Jason Priestess, uh, founder of 11 Warriors, great defender of... <laughs> Twinkies? Twinkies, maybe. There you go. There you go. <laughs> really baked goods in yep, general. Yep, yep. Um, the, uh, the, the mind behind at 11W and the, yeah, the originator of 11warriors.com. Uh, Chris Lauterbach, he was the uh, second member of 11 Warriors, I guess. Um, started off really kind of picking up our basketball coverage for us, and he's been, been part of the crew for, what, eight years now, and done a really, really good job at uh, a lot of that stuff. And Here during a basketball game. Yeah. It's committed. Uh, we're a little bigger now. We can, we can pay people to go to games for us, but, yeah, not, not quite what it used to be. So. And this is Matt Finkus, I guess the uh, maybe the 12th Warrior, defender of... Mm -hmm. uh, most running backs, except for Bianca Patuka, I guess. Yes, yeah. not so much on him. <laughs> We've uh, combined collectively to lose to Michigan four times. <laughs> so what's the social do? Is that to send like you and That's just Tom? for us to hang out and drink is, is and that, have a good time. Does that send you and Tom Zach in a shade of hedonism? Or yeah, I mean, you know, me and Mike, we go, to, we go to Hyde Park and have a nice dinner, order some nice big bottles I've been telling people this is all going to <laughs> pants. $17 <laughs> towards gold pants. <laughs> And right now, we're involved with 11 Warriors with, with the Gold Pants Social, which has been integral in, in funding how the pants are, are purchased every year. And you know, we, we've had to come up with new ingenious ways to do it. And, and I think you know, partnering with you guys and, and doing something that isn't just a, a golf outing or, or something like that, where the fans get a chance to come back in to, to see the Woody Hayes Center, which you know the majority of fans don't ever get to do, or to be inside of that and be in the players' lounge, to interact with the guys who, who have played in the game, it is a unique experience. And I think that's kind of, when you go back and, and kind of look at what the gold pants is about and, and how it is still you know, tied to the community and how we want to start embracing that more and more and more as we continue with the gold pants, the social is a great way to, to bring the fans and the community into the group of guys that, that receive it and still, you know, kind of vanguard the, the club. It's such a cool event, too. The, uh, and then you find that the Woody's not just an impressive facility. We were walking through the locker room last year, and, you know, you've, you're looking at numbers and names, and then something jumped out of the corner of my eye. It's, it's a Kenny G album cover, like actual Kenny G. <laughs> um, like, I, I know whose locker that is. Oh, his locker, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I try to tell people when we're, we're pushing for, you know, people to, to buy tickets and stuff, I try to convey, like, how cool of a night it is for mm -hmm. Ohio State fans. I don't think I ever really do it justice, though. I mean, my, my dad went last year, went to the bathroom, and he comes back, he's like, I just saw Kenny Guyton's locker. And, you know, and <laughs> we, had a, we had an Ohio State student work in the door for us last year, and Hicks walked in. And his Lombardi's over there, like, yeah. like four feet away from him, the trophy sitting there. He's like, who's that guy? Do I let him in? I'm like, that's his trophy. You let him yeah. do whatever he yeah. wants to do tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Can I see some ID? It's right, it's right there. <laughs> it's a chunk of marble. It's sitting right there. At least for the three of us, and, and, and somewhat to you know, your playing career, you know, it, was, it was brutal. You know, yeah, it's just amazing how it, how it kind of ebbs and flows, though, like you said, because, I mean, we're, you know, we're around 40 years old, so we cut our teeth in the Cooper era where you really remembered the games in great detail. You go through 2, 10, and 1, and here comes Trestle, and it's 9, and 1, and then all of a sudden it's basically equal over those, you know, over those mm -hmm. two tenures. The rivalry's about balanced out, even though it was heartburn and then, you know, just burning them. Um, but, yeah, the, the Cooper era was really tough, but it did make the wins when they did come, you know, really, really special because we win in so many years and, yep. you know, undefeated or whatever. And well, then, yeah, there's a whole generation now of, of, of Ohio State fans, younger fans, have no have never, yeah, have no idea. Have what never, it's like. have never feared Michigan, really. <laughs> yeah. you know, mm -hmm. right. I'm like, yeah. you don't understand what this weekend means, and and they're like, those guys are terrible. I've never had to worry about Michigan. <laughs> what was a Michigan week like? For, for you on the team, what were meetings like? What, and how, how, what was the atmosphere? It, it's a, it's really crowded. I mean, you're doing a lot more than your normal week. Yeah. I mean, the, your normal week, you just you show up at the Woody Hayes and you go to meetings, you go to practice, and you go do your workout, and that's fine. I mean, you know, you, you've got the band that comes in, you've got senior tackle, you've got you know, th th there's just a million different events that go on constantly, and just to to try to fit all that in 
And, you know, football players are such creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. You know, the same thing has to happen at the same time every single time. Right. And if something doesn't, then it throws, you know, throws your whole system out of whack. Well, all of a sudden when you're, you know, having to cut practice short so the band can come in and you can run Script Ohio and you're carrying around a trumpet and you're like, <laughs> what, what are we doing here? It's a, I'm sure it's a great tradition, but, you know, we're, we, I need to be back watching film and getting the training table. And, you know, Maybe so you should have played some more trumpet. It could be. Yeah, I mean, won a few more games. It could yeah. be. Maybe yeah. if we would have just done it a little bit better. <laughs> Didn't a little do bit hard better. enough, Matt. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, it's, it's, it is. It's, there's a ton of distractions that go on all week long, and it, it's just... It, it, it's one of the hardest things about the week because, I mean, you, like I said, you're so ready to prepare for that game, and then you get to the week and you're like, okay, I'm going to put in all this extra effort to prepare. And you're like, yeah, you don't have time to do all that because you know, we're going to go do ten to other things, and you know, we're going to take a night off for senior tackle and everything else. I mean, it, it's a, it is, it's just jam packed week. I can speak to what Michigan Week's like as a blogger. Hmm. Um, <laughs> you're just waiting for Saturday and you're miserable and. You probably do some binge eating. Sure. Uh, Looks like it. Well, it's Michigan week. <laughs> okay. So. Um, then Saturday comes and it's just a complete release and you get to be chill about everything because oh, Ohio State nice. wins now. Yeah, yeah. These days. These days. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's especially nice recently because it's now Thanksgiving week too, so it's, it's, it's extra weird. Which now. I hate. Yeah, super weird. I don't like it at all. What does everyone think about uh, night kickoff for the Michigan game? No, I hate it. I hate night, night kickoffs in general. You? Well, Mainly to, because I have to work. So he has to work. That's <laughs> yeah, throw, throw work out the window. What, what, what would your feelings change? Uh, the night game atmosphere is great. But what we did here recently where we have made some bad games night games takes away from that atmosphere. If, if you want things to be special, then you do them on a limited basis. You don't think Illinois was electric? No. Illinois, Illinois is getting you, shade right now. You, you, you don't play <laughs> bad you teams at night. Name. You don't do the, you know, the, the combat uniforms, which I hate too. You, know, you don't do those every other week. If you, if, you want it to be, if you want it to be special, then you do it once every when it's special. I mean, Notre Dame doesn't run out green uniforms every every week. They do it when they have a chance of winning a game. And they lose those games. Yes. They're awful now they uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. Now they do. But, but even, I mean, even they recently, to, they've, added, the yeah, they've added like, gold specks to their helmet, which is like they've, they've kind of copied yeah, Ohio I mean, State's I, look a little bit. They're, they're, the helmets they're, are horrible. Yeah. The, the helmets and the pro combat things are all terrible. Vickis hates football. He yeah, 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 yeah. just told me. I hate new age football. I don't like it. What's your biggest memory from the game? From Ohio State, Michigan, ever. Yeah. Uh, 1987, when they when Earl Bruce was fired the week of the game, and then watching that game, just trans Michigan jumped out, you know, really early. I was in middle school, and then Ohio State second half was all Ohio State, and they win the game and carry him off the field. And uh, I, pre I I have some memories pre Coop of, uh, of of the rivalry. That was the first time I started to see like it. Not, it doesn't just matter to you know kids in my school in Ohio State and people in my neighborhood. It matters to old men like Earl Bruce, mm -hmm. um, where you see how emotional he was getting at yeah. the end. And I saw some, some older people that week uh, after they beat Michigan, like, can, can you believe they did that for Earl? Like, they were really getting caught up in that. And I think that was a nice moment for me to realize, you know, this is, this is more than just a football game. It's funny you mentioned, like, your first Michigan memory. My, honestly, my first Michigan memory, and I don't remember the year, it was probably 86, was Colazar catching bombs in the fourth quarter. 88. Was it 88? Yeah. Okay. So maybe I don't remember Earl too well. Well, it could have been any year he was there, but yeah, he was doing yeah. it in Ohio Stadium <laughs> yeah, yeah, in 88. Yeah, it was in the shoe, and it was yeah. late, and it was like, you got to be kidding me. Uh, what about you? What's your biggest uh, my My first memory, I guess, is what sticks out the most, and I think it was the 81 game, so I was only like eight years old, but I remember just, you know, watching it with my dad and my dad's buddies and that whole thing, and just... I think Schleister had like a six-yard run in the fourth quarter, you know, late, like maybe a minute left. And I remember Von Brodnax making a huge block, and Schleister goes into the corner and goes into some snow that was rolled up, and I just remember the house erupting. And I think I was just then old enough to realize, man, this, ha this happens every year, you know, mm -hmm. like this is cool. So that, yeah. that was probably my first memory. Yeah. But I think uh, 98 sticks out a lot just because of, you know, everything we had been through. Yeah. And, you know, even though we had, the Ohio State lost to Michigan State that year, you know, to, to finally really lay it on them. And that was the best Ohio State team that I, yeah. you know, to yeah. that point Me I had too. seen and probably yeah. arguably still could be. Yeah. Easy, right. buddy. I think 98. <laughs> no, no, you, 96, I mean, 96 was loaded too, but I, I think it's between 96 and 98 for best teams. And 2002 won it all, but I don't think they were the most talented team. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. There's some talent on that team, obviously. You look at all the players that went in the NFL, but. Um, oh, six part of the holidays? Yeah. Yeah. 
that was uh that one was, bow die in the, the night before that that game was, was six was just yeah insane. yeah, yeah. 42 39 and then yeah. and trestle calling that play for the fourth down play to to, to ted ginn such huge plays that was like ginn's like bunched up on the line like yeah. a tight yeah. end like no one sees <laughs> ted ginn lining yeah. up as a tight end yeah they rushed to the line real fast on that one i think beanie had a 52 yarder Pittman had like a 56 yeah. yarder just big yeah. Yeah. big yeah. plays in that yeah game. that was a lot of fun uh, how long do they get them? Is there a specific process? We normally, or yeah, we normally give them to them uh, in, in April, uh, the weekend, uh, the Thursday before the spring game is, is when we uh, present them to the team. Uh, Jim and, and Mike and I and a small group of businessmen that we have, about three or four guys right now that, that help us organize everything, uh, we'll go in and meet with the team. And uh, that's what I was kind of getting at is when all that stuff happened with the gold pants and Terrell Pryor and all those guys selling their gold pants and finding them on eBay, uh, we had to come in and talk to the team and, and kind of tell them the history of it and what it meant and, and in no uncertain terms, like, hey, buddy, I'm out there raising the money for these. You know, you're, you're basically taking something that I'm giving you. It's not the university, and, and you're selling it. And, and not just, the, you know, what it means and, and what it signifies and the history of it, but that's, that's, those are my hard-earned dollars that, you, that yeah. you're going out and putting on eBay. And since then, we have not had a problem with it. Good. It's, it's Were they pretty, pretty well. receptive to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that once you kind of lay things out to them, I mean, there's always kind of that, uh, in college football especially, that, you know, us versus the, the university or us versus the NCAA mentality. So when Jim and I came in and said, hey, it's not the university, this is... Right. Us too. Probably. You know, yeah. we're the ones doing this, so so stop selling them. Uh, I would think 90% or greater, though, didn't really need to be told that, right? I mean, most folks do understand what that means, and they do want to keep those. Yeah, I mean, the significance and the history of it, yeah. the fact that it's paid for by private enterprises is uh, not well known. Oh, yeah, I get today. that's news to yeah. them, but I mean, right. most of the kids yeah, that most win players, are not trying to get those. You know, it's not, I want to go sell this. It's, I want to keep this forever and hand sure. it Sure, and, and, probably, mom, those guys that, yeah, and probably those guys that did sell those, I'm sure, you know, five, ten years down the road when they come calling me and saying, hey, can I get a sure. replacement pair? I mean, no. If you needed, like, a compelling video to show them, aside from anything, you could do six seconds of John Hicks. During, <laughs> Tearing it, down it, the flag? Well, <laughs> they, they, they did a clip of him during that HBO documentary uh -huh. that they did, I think, in 2006, 2007. And he's just holding them up, and he's like, this represents three of the finest moments of my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the movie. Yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, it, it, it's that significant, and it's that special. And, you know, I was with John a little while ago. Uh, for a fundraiser he did for the Diabetes Association. I'm very passionate about that, obviously, and it was brought up about him coming in and ripping the banner down. But, uh, but really also, you know, it, it, a lot of the conversation was about how much this game is it, in an age where everything is individualized. It's, you know, what I can get for my likeness. You know, my stats, how many touchdowns do I have? How many sacks do I have? Everything is individualized. No one, is, no one has ever come up to me and asked me, how many sacks did you have in, in your Michigan games? They, now, they asked me my record. How did, you, how, did you do, how did your team do against Michigan? But it, it's something that is bigger than any one person. And it, it always will be. And you've had some of the greatest players ever to come through college football play in this game. And no one asks Archie Griffin how many yards he had against Michigan, but they ask him how many times he won and lost. Mm. Because it's, it's so much bigger than any one person. And that's a rarity in, in, in today's day and age, I think. Sports talk. sports talk, and it's all on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. At 6, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason takes your calls live on more sports and less Levine. Then at 7, Dave Bacon and the boys unload on the week in football on armchair quarterbacks. And at 8, Bruce Uli's out to make you the smartest sports fan around. Ignite your Monday night with the rising stars of Ohio Sports Talk, only on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel.